Hello, my smart and talented friends, and welcome to the Global Science Network. Today, we're gonna to be talking about different ways to build an SR latch, a gated SR latch, and a data latch. These are really important circuits to understand how to build. As you probably know, we're working towards creating a four-bit computer using individual transistors, and then we're going to be building artificial neurons as we work our way towards creating non-biological human consciousness. Let's get to it. SR latch one is a very simple way to build an SR latch. It only requires two transistors. This LED is our output and this LED is showing the inverse of our output. This push button here is our set and this push button is our reset. And if we press set, we'll see that our output turns on and whenever we press reset, our output turns off. This was a simple way to build a latch but we actually wanna build our latches using digital logic gates. So let's look at how we can build this SR latch using different types of logic gates. Let's start by looking at this OR gate. This is a basic OR gate that uses three transistors. Right now we have it hooked up so that whenever we press this button, input A will turn on, which for an OR gate, it should turn on the LED. So whenever we press the button, the LED turns on, and whenever we release the button, the LED turns off. Now what we want to do is we want to take the output of this OR gate and feed it back into input B. So now whenever we turn input A on, it will make it so that the output is going into input B, and it should make it so that the output of this OR gate just stays on all of the time. So let's see if this works. So we're going to take the output right here and we're gonna hook it into input B. And now whenever we press this button, our circuit just stays on or it's latched on. But now we can't turn it off. If we press this button again and again, it won't turn off unless we unhook the power or if we actually physically remove this jumper. So rather than using OR gates, SR latch two is built using two NOR gates. Our output is Q and the inverse output is Q inverse. So this LED right here is the output and this is the inverse of the output. You'll notice that we have a set and a reset pin. We control these with the two push button switches. So this one is set and this one is reset. If we press set, our output will turn on. And if we press reset, our output will turn off. Now let's talk about how this circuit is built. These two transistors right here are the top NOR gate. These two right here are the bottom NOR gate. We have two buffers. These two transistors are the top buffer and these two are the bottom buffer. Notice that the output from the top NOR gate goes into the input of the bottom NOR gate, and then the output of the bottom NOR gate goes into the input of the top NOR gate. And that's actually why we need these buffers. Because the output is being sent into the input, if we just tried to send the output across an LED, it would not light up. But if we send it into a buffer and then across an LED, it will light up. Now let's talk about how this circuit is actually working. This is the state of our circuit right now. You can see that we have our set and our reset are both zero because these push buttons are not being pushed. The output of our bottom NOR gate is on and it comes up and it makes it so that this pin of our top NOR gate is also on. Now let's look at what happens whenever we press our set button. Well, the output turns on. So why exactly does that happen? So this circuit here is showing that now the set button is pressed. Well, previously, the inputs to both of these bottom NOR gates were zero, which is why the output was on. Because if you look at the truth table for a NOR gate, if both inputs are off, the output is on. So it was on. Well, now one of the inputs is a one, which means the output is going to go to be a zero. So now this output is off. And we used to have one of the inputs at the top NOR gate be on, but now they're both off. So since they're both off, it's going to turn on. So this one turns on, and that is why our output is now on. Now we're gonna look at what happens whenever we press reset. Whenever our set was held down, this was a one, but our current state is it's not being held down, so this is a zero, and now we're going to press reset. So we press reset and our output turns off. Well, why exactly did it turn off? Previously, both of these inputs were zero, so this output was on. Well, now one of them is a one, so this output is going to turn off. And this input of our bottom NOR gate used to be on, and now they're both off, so this output is going to turn on. So now our inverse output is on and our regular output is off. And that's how SR latch two works. And now let's look at SR latch three. All right, SR latch three is built using two NAND gates. 
So these two transistors right here are the top NAND gate, and these two transistors right here are the bottom NAND gate. And anytime you have an SR latch built with NAND gates, it's a little bit confusing because the inputs are supposed to be inverted. And not only are the inputs supposed to be inverted, but they usually switch the S and the R location. So the reset is down here where the set is, and the set is usually up here where the reset is. So then it's like, well, how the heck am I supposed to wire this thing up? And it's actually not that confusing. So for the inverted inputs, you just have to actually add an inverter. And then I like keeping the S down here and the R right here so that it's just like every other SR latch. But then you just have to take the output of these inverters and you have to cross them. Looking at our circuit, this is the top inverter and this is the bottom inverter. And then we cross the outputs. So we take the output from the top inverter and feed it into the bottom NAND gate. And then we take the output from the bottom inverter and feed it into the top NAND gate. This circuit diagram right here is the current state of our circuit. We can see that the inputs going into these two inverters are both off because our buttons are not being pushed down, which means the output of both of the inverters are on. So on and on. And for a NAND gate, for the output to be off, both of the inputs have to be on. So if you look at our top NAND gate, both of the inputs are on, which is why it is off. Now what's gonna happen whenever we actually press the set button? So we press set, and the output turns on. Well, why does this happen? Whenever we press the set button, this inverter output turns off. So now both of these inputs are no longer on, which means that this output is going to turn on. And now both inputs to this bottom NAND gate are on, which means the output is going to turn off, which is why our output is on and our inverted output is off. And now you know how to build an SR latch using two NAND gates. SR latch 4 is a gated SR latch. So notice that we have a set and a reset pin, but now we also have an enable pin. This is actually built using four NAND gates, and it's actually very similar to SR latch 3, where we had two NAND gates and then two buffers, but now instead of the buffers, we're going to have two NAND gates. If we look at how this is wired up, these two transistors right here are this top NAND gate, these two are the second NAND gate, these two are this top buffer, these two are the bottom NAND gate, these two are the second bottom NAND gate, and then these last two transistors are the last buffer. Also notice that the output from this top NAND gate goes into the input of the bottom NAND gate, and then the output of the bottom NAND gate goes into the input of the top NAND gate. Also notice that the output from these two NAND gates does get crisscrossed. This circuit diagram right here shows the current state of this circuit. Let's start with the enable pin. Right now the enable pin is on. It is on because this resistor right here is going into the base of this transistor and into the base of this transistor. If the enable pin was off, basically if we took this resistor right here out and we tried to toggle these switches, nothing would happen because the enable pin would then be off. But right now it is on, so if we hit set or reset, it will change values. Our set and our reset are both zero because neither push button switch is currently being pushed down. If we look at the output of these NAND gates, they're both on right now. So the inputs of this top NAND gate are both on, which is why this output is off. Now let's look at what happens whenever we press the set button. So we're gonna press the set button and now the output is going to turn on. Well, why did the output turn on? Well, both of these used to be on, but whenever we press the set button down, now this one turns off. So now this one's off and this one's on, which previously this output was off. Well, now it's going to be on. And now that this one, this bottom NAND gate has both inputs being a one, this output is going to turn off. So our main output is going to be on and our inverted output is going to be off. And just to show you right now, our output will toggle because our enable pin is on. But whenever I pull this enable pin out, and now I try and toggle it, nothing will happen. If I press both of them, nothing happens because our enable is no longer on. And now you should have a good understanding of how this gated SR latch works. And now we're going to look at how to build a data latch. It's actually very similar to this gated SR latch that we were just looking at. I actually just modified the circuit by adding this inverter where previously we had a set and a reset pin and now we no longer do. Now we just have our data come in to this inverter and then our data also gets fed into where our set pin used to be into the bottom input of this other NAND gate. So now we just have one push button switch that will be able to toggle our circuit back and forth. 
All right, now let's look at how this data latch works. Whenever I press the button, the output turns on, and whenever I release the button, the output turns off. So it doesn't really latch, right? Well, that's because the enable pin is constantly on. If I were to press this button, and then I were to remove the enable pin, so now the enable is off, and I release it, now you can see that it actually latches on. And now if I press this button, it doesn't matter what happens, the output stays on. These circuit diagrams over here basically show those three example cases where this top one is the current state of this circuit where the input coming in is a zero because we're not pushing this button. So since it's off, our output is off and our inverted output is on. Now if we press the button, the output is on and the inverted output is off. If while we're pressing the button, we pull out this enable pin, so now the enable is off, which you can see right here, well now it locks it in that state. It locks it in that state because now the output of both of these NAND gates is on, so this output can no longer switch states. The data latch that we were just looking at was built using four NAND gates, but a data latch can also be built using two NOR gates and two AND gates. These are basically equivalent circuits. So this circuit right here is the data latch that we were just looking at, and this circuit right here is a data flip-flop. You'll notice that the only thing different between these two circuits is rather than having an enable pin here, we actually have a clock input. This clock input is actually supposed to be an edge-triggered clock pulse, and that's the difference between a data latch and a data flip-flop. It's actually not that different, but this data flip-flop is actually really important to know how to build. And if you're interested in learning more about flip-flops, in our next video we're going to be talking all about it. So if you're interested in that, you can click right here.